Hello everyone, my name is Christopher Tolbert. I'm the founder and CEO of Tolbert Music and I'm here today to welcome you to our 2024-25 school band and orchestra programs. This is a vlog series that I'm gonna be doing throughout the school year. It's all generalized information, specific information about your program should be directed, uh, questions should be directed to your teacher in your program, but I'm gonna be giving you tips throughout the entire school year that apply to everybody. And today I wanna to talk specifically about selecting the right instrument for our classes and then acquiring the right instrument for your student to use. And then also things to think about in the long term of investing in and owning that instrument over time. If you're a returner, that information about the long term is still highly relevant to you. I'll timestamp the video down below so that you can skip ahead to that portion since you probably already have selected and rented or acquired an instrument one way or the other. Uh, but this is, that's important information that you're gonna to wanna to consider here as well. So let's begin by talking about instrument selection. The most important factor is what the students want to do. We are all about student choice. We don't care whether we have the right amount of this instrument and that instrument. Whatever they wanna pick, we're really, really happy for them to pick. The easiest way that they're gonna come up with what they wanna play is from our instrument demonstration day. We bring one of everything that's on offer in the program to the school for the students to try out. They get a chance to come up and give them, give them a shot. And it's a really exciting, really, really, really cool, fun day. For them, it's chaos, but we all have a really great time and they get to get a real feel for what it might be like to play one of these instruments. It is very common on instrument demo day for a student to come up and try one instrument and not be able to make any sound on it and then try another and it makes great sounds for them. Um, the flute is notoriously very difficult to get sounds on. And so if you're getting sounds on the first try, that might be a great choice for you. Um, once the students have tried the different instruments, it really sorts itself out. They, get, they gravitate towards the one that made good sounds for them. And that's the best choice for us to be making. That's going to get them off on the right foot. And they're... The, the long-term considerations of which instrument to pick are just not worth taking into account here at this point. It's just too early in the stage of it all. And ultimately, they're all wonderful instruments. Uh, we wouldn't put them on the list if they weren't. So there really isn't a wrong choice in this case. Um, in some rare cases, we'll have a student who has their heart set on something and then they struggle with it on instrument demonstration day. And so that's totally fine. We're, we're going to work it out. All the instruments are hard. You might make great sounds on the demo day. And then after you rent the instrument, you struggle with the first couple times on it. It's, it's really okay. Um, that's part of the deal. And the first several weeks are developing the right instrument hold and developing the right sounds on the instrument. So it's normal for that to take time. If you got your heart set on something, um, don't, don't be afraid to pick it just because it didn't go maybe exactly like you hoped on instrument demo day. All right, so the bottom line here is let your student pick whatever it is they wanna pick, especially if they come home from demo day really excited about something, that's the one to go with. If you have any further questions about it, please don't hesitate to reach out. Great, so now let's talk about instrument acquisition, how to get an instrument to be able to participate in one of our classes. There's really like two ways to go here. Um, and one option is only available to some people, and that is to use an instrument that you already own. If you played as a young person or a grandparent did, you might have an instrument around that's perfectly functional. Um, let's start there and let's try that first. I will give you a fair warning. Instruments that have been sitting in a closet for 15 years or, or whatever may not be working the way that we need them to. Um, they may need a minor repair. They may need a major repair. There may be a tough decision there uh, along those lines, but let's at least start there. In most cases, we get old instruments and they're working just fine. They're a great choice. Um, if that's not an option for you, or your student really wants to play something else, and I do recommend letting them take their choice. I know it's tempting to say, you gotta play this one because we've already got it. But if they are attracted to something else, I really highly recommend letting them do that. It makes a big difference towards their success. They're more motivated to do it, and the investment is just a lot more worthwhile. So um, if, if you don't have an old one to use, the only way to go is to do a rent to own program, a rent to own program. Um, don't go on Facebook Marketplace and buy a cheap used one. You have no idea how well it's been maintained over the years. And even if it's making okay sounds on the first day, it, something's going to break on it and you never know what that repair bill is going to look like. 
Um, don't buy a cheap Mendini or other brand like this off of Amazon. I've actually bought some of those myself to test them out and they're really shiny out of the box and feel like this might be okay. This is probably fine. I just saved a bunch of money and then <laughs> they break down. And they're not worth repairing because it's some expensive thing that is worth more than the instrument was in the first place anyways. So do not go in that direction. And if you're going to be buying an instrument outright, it's it's hard to resell it. Just get in one of these rent to own programs. It's inexpensive upfront and the money that you're spending builds equity over time towards owning the instrument in the end anyways. So in my opinion, it is really the only choice. Tolbert Music is partnered with Music and Arts for a rent, uh, rent to own program. You get a small discount for being at one of our schools and then going over to music and arts and renting. So they're definitely who I recommend going to. We started with a smaller local company several years ago that got bought out by music and arts and we've been treated like solid gold ever since. They've been really great to us and all of our clients. Um, and one of the biggest advantages of going with them is the quality of the repair network that you're going to be in. Um, because it's a big, um, national store. They have really, really, really excellent repair facilities and just kind of infinite resources to be able to take care of that. If something happens to your instrument, you bring it in. They usually just hand you another one right then and there and say, use this in the meantime. They get this one fixed. They call you when it's ready. So it's really, really, really excellent to be in their network as far as that is concerned. Um, they give you a really good quality instrument. Any store that you go to is going to give you a good quality instrument. I wouldn't be concerned about that, but I can attest to the ones that we're getting from music and arts personally. So, okay. So you've decided that you're going to do rent to own. How do you do it? Um, step one, check our website, tolbertmusic.net slash rental. Go down to the, through the list to the instrument that you're going to rent and double check the list of materials that we need you to get. It's not just the instrument. There are small accessories that do need to be purchased as well. It includes maintenance stuff. It might be reeds, might be rosin. It might be uh, something to help it stay in place because it's big and heavy. There's all kinds of stuff that you're going to need um, right along with the instrument. None of it is very expensive, but we put on the list what you do actually need. So please check it. Step two, call ahead to the store. Uh, it's a very busy time of year. You don't want to waste a trip to head over to the store and then realize, oh, they're out of saxophones or whatever it is you happen to be renting. Um, make that call, put a hold on whatever it is you're going to rent, and then maybe even a hold on the materials that you need as well because you never know when those are going to run out. And then when it's in, they'll give you a call. Maybe they have it right now. You can head over to the store and pick it up and you'll have everything that you need. They do ask you to sign a contract. It's really straightforward. I do, of course, recommend that you read through it, but there shouldn't be any surprises in there. They might recommend that you pick up a book. Um, you don't need to pick up the book that they're recommending. We have our own that we wrote specifically for our classes for lots of reasons we'll talk about in an upcoming video. <laughs> um, if you want to get a supplemental material, it isn't going to hurt you to have that book and it's not um, expensive to pick. So having a little extra stuff for your student to practice certainly isn't going to hurt, but you don't need to pick up any books that they might be recommending to you. Okay, so the last bit to talk about here is the long term of owning and investing in this instrument. So the first thing to think about here is that somewhere down the line here, usually at, towards the end of the school year or over the summer, Music and Arts reaches out to clients and offers them a really big discount on buying out the remainder of their contract. If you know that your student is going to continue playing, then here's an opportunity to get the instrument at a very significant discount. So being in this rent to own program, you're pretty much inevitably going to be offered that discount sooner or later. Um, I will give you one cautionary note about jumping on that because there's another advantage that you would be sacrificing to buy the instrument at that time. The other thing you might consider taking advantage of is rolling the equity over into what we call a professional grade instrument. Professional grade instruments are very, very, very expensive. We don't put them in the hands of beginners <laughs> um, and we don't ask uh, people who are new to the programs to invest in that kind of a resource. It's too much to ask. But if your student is taking it really seriously in high school and they're thinking about doing college auditions, which they should definitely do, even if they're not majoring in music, you can get some serious scholarship money. I'm talking like full rides at Ivy Leagues for auditioning into their bands and orchestras. If you're going to try and do that, you're going to want to have a professional grade instrument. And if you've been in one of these rent to own programs, you can roll the equity over into the professional grade instrument as if you've been investing in it the entire time. And the store is really happy to do that because they get back hopefully a really well cared for instrument that they can rent out to the next person. It 
it's very um, saves waste and it's kind of an everybody wins situation. So um, it, if your student is going to go the long run, then this might be the, the optimal choice for you. You really end up between a choice of do I just buy out this cheaper instrument um, or do I want to consider rolling it over into the professional instrument? That's not a choice that I can make for you. Um, the advantages of the former is that then you have an instrument that we call a beater. <laughs> it's an instrument that you don't mind getting a little beat up. If you're playing in a club or you are playing on a marching band field, you don't mind using this instrument because it's a perfectly acceptable instrument and um, you also don't mind if it gets a ding or a scratch or something like that. And then your professional grade instrument that you would buy separately would be for the concert hall and auditions and this type of stuff. For those of you that are just beginning, it's not something that you need to worry about too much right now. Just get into that rent to own program and we can reassess towards the end of the school year when we see how your student is doing. Okay. That's it for the message today. Thank you so much for sitting through it. There will be more coming in the near future about first steps of what you can do to help your student make their first sounds and get through the first few and most difficult weeks of being in band and orchestra. Thanks again, and we'll see you real soon. Bye-bye.